Now, before we talk about multiplication any further, we need to talk about what it means to simplify a radical. And so here's the definition, and it's going to be one of the head-spinning definitions, but don't worry, I'll, I'll make it clear. Definition, a radical expression is simplified if no factors of the radicand, that's the guy underneath the radical, can be written in terms of powers equal to or greater than the index. Let me give you a really simple example of a radical that's not simplified, and then we'll go back up to that one we just did and show you why it's not simplified. Um, well, okay, here's one. Is the square, you should know the answer to this, is the square root of four simplified? No, because the square root of four is two. We know that, right? But wait a minute. Uh, we could write it as, ah, that's too many twos. Let's make it the square root of nine instead. So you guys know that the square root of nine is not simplified because the square root of nine is three, right? Okay, yeah, that's true, but let me rewrite it as the square root of three squared. Okay, what's the index? You don't see it. The index is two. And now go back and look at the definition. It's gonna be in simplified form if no factors of the radicand can be written in terms of powers equal to uh, or greater than the index. It's not simplified because this power on the three is equal to the index. And of course, it's easy to see it's not simplified because the square root of three squared, which is the square root of nine is, is equal to three. So it's not in simplified form. What about, what if I had um, the cubed root of eight? I mean, you know that's not simplified because what's the cubed root of eight? Two. But just to drive the point home as to how this definition or what this definition is saying, you can think of this as the cubed root of two cubed. And the idea is this power is equal to the index. So it's not simplified. What if I had something like the cubed root of two to the fourth, which is the cubed root of 16? Is it simplified? No, because if this power, if you can write any factor with a power bigger than or equal to the index, it ain't simplified. So this power is four on this, in this radicand. The power on the two is four, bigger than three, it's not simplified. Okay, that's what the definition is saying if you break up and factor the radicand. If it's simplified, you shouldn't be able to write any of those factors with powers equal to or bigger than the index. And that, that brings us to the next example. So we'll start out with something you probably know how to do. I'm gonna show you maybe a way that looks a little more complicated, at least at first, um, to how you were taught how to do this maybe in your last class. But there's a reason for it. And the reason is consistency and the fact that it's gonna work on harder problems. So if this looks more complicated, if this method that I'm showing you looks more complicated than what you're used to, just be patient. I think you'll like it in the long run. So if we want to simplify the square root of 32, here's what we have to do. We have to find all, so what's the index? You guys tell me, what's the index of this root since you don't see it? Two, it's a square root. The index is two, right? So what we want to do is we want to find um, basically the largest perfect square factors of 32. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to, uh, we're going to do a factor tree of 32, kind of a scratch work. So 32 what two numbers multiply together to make 32? There's, there's more than two choices, but what do you think of? You think of 16 and two, okay. So we just happen to find the largest perfect square that's a factor of 32 by your choice right there. And so if I were in a hurry to simplify this, this square root of 32, here's what I'd do. Uh, I would rewrite the square root of 32 as the square root of 16 times two and then by that, by that first big rule, you can split up the radical, right, over multiplication. So you could rewrite this as the square root of 16 times the square root of two, right? The radical splits up over multiplication. So the square root of 16 times two is the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of two. But what's the square root of 16? Four, so you get four rad two. And that's what we call the simplified form of the square root of 32. Now. That's the method, that's probably the easiest method. In fact, you could even skip this step 
and just say, hey, I can pull out a factor of the square root of 16, which is four right there, and then go right to the cleaned up answer. So you could even skip that step. But at first, I'm not gonna show you that method. I'm gonna show you a method that's consistent with how we do it when, when you have to simplify like the square root of x to the 15 or something, for consistency's sake. So here's the method I'm gonna use today. And then, you know, later on, if you use, if you, I'll keep this up here. So this is the, the, the fast way. I'll keep this up here when I post the notes. But let me, let me explain the method uh, and why I'm using it as we go. Uh, so instead of, instead of realizing that this 16 is a perfect square, I'm going to factor it even further. Uh, 2 times 8, right? 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. So how many 2s all together? 1, 2, 3, 4, and don't forget this one, 5. So 32 is 2 to the fifth power, isn't it? Okay. So now that you have that, what you want to do is you want to split up. Again, this will look more complicated than it needs to be at first, but trust me, there's a method to my madness here. Once you realize that 32 is 2 to the fifth, split it up. Now, we know that if you take a base to an even power, it's a perfect square, right? So what you're looking for, so like x squared is a perfect squared, x to the fourth is a perfect square, right? x to the sixth, x to the eighth, x to the tenth, those are all perfect squares, right? We know how to take the square roots. We just divide the exponent by two, right? So that's what we're doing here. We want to look, since the index is two, we want to look for perfect square factors here. So what's the next power of two down from two to the fifth, that's a perfect square? Two to the fourth. So that's how I'm gonna split it up. I'm gonna split up the radicand two to the fifth as two to the fourth times two. And I know this looks crazy, but trust me, there's a reason for doing this. Two to the fourth times two. Now, Two to the fourth, because the four is an even power, we know that two to the fourth is a perfect square. Yeah, it's 16, but let's pretend like we don't even, th we're not even thinking that way. Two to the fourth, because the exponent is four, is a perfect square. So now break up the multiplication. We know the square root breaks up over multiplication. Break it up into the square root of two to the fourth times the square root of two. And then how do you take the square root of two to the fourth? What's the shortcut we've been talking about? You keep that base two and divide the exponent by the index. It, and why does that work? Because of fraction exponents, right? The square root of two to the fourth, the square root of two to the fourth is two to the four divided by two, isn't it? If you write it using the fractional exponent notation, that's a step you're gonna skip in the future. You don't have to worry about it, but that's why it works. You divide that exponent by two and you get the square root of two to the fourth, which is two squared. And then you still have that radical two tagging along. So your, your final answer is two squared rad two or just four radical two. And I know what you're thinking, that's way longer than the easy way that I showed you over here. But like I said before, trust me, there's a reason why I'm showing you this long method. Does it make sense? I mean, you may not be able to do it yet, but does it make sense? Don't worry, I'm gonna show you more examples. Let's try another example with the, the square root of 54. So let's find the factorization. It's actually called the prime factorization uh, of 54. Using that factor tree, when you do that factor tree, you're finding the prime factorization. So uh, what two numbers multiply together to make 54 that you think of? Two and 27. Two and 27 is a good choice. There's other choices, right? That works. And then how does 27 break down? Three and nine, how does nine break down? So what's the prime factorization of 54? You've got a factor of two times three cubed. Okay. So I'm gonna rewrite the radicand as two times three cubed. The radicand is 54. I'm gonna rewrite that as two times three cubed. And now again, I'm looking for perfect square factors. So I can pull them outside the radical just by taking the square root. Okay, there's no way I can get a perfect square factor out of the two, right? 
but the three cubed contains a, a power of three squared, doesn't it? So break it up, break it. I'm gonna reorder the multiplication here. What's the next perfect square down from three cubed? Three squared. And then what's left? Well, we still have the two and we still have an, an extra factor of three, don't we? I'll put the non-perfect square factors kind of over here to, this, to one side. Is that the same thing as two times three cubed? Yeah, you can see the, th the three threes, right? There's three squared and then another factor of three over on the right. Now you can break up the radical over multiplication, so you get the square root of three squared times the square root of two times three, which is six, right? And what's the square root of three squared? Three. three. So three rad six is your answer. Again, that is the long way of doing it, but there's a reason for it. Any questions on that? By the way, in the future, we can skip this step right here and just say, hey, the square root, we know the, the, the square root breaks up over multiplication. Pull out the square root of 3 squared, which is 3, and then write the final answer.